Welcome everyone to the Lo-Fi poli Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering, and that's right, Lo-Fi, as in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be, global news show. Here we're going to talk about that famous question, what's going on in the world today? We'll be covering five headlines from across the globe, and then choose one to go into a more detailed analysis. The news, fresh off the press. Source, The Guardian, World Section. Myanmar editor could face life in jail for interviewing Rebel. The journalist in question interviewed and aired the interview with the rebel group that the Burmese government considers a terrorist organization. One of the charges under the country's counterterrorism law was for allowing the group to spread fear and hide. The implications. For all people who make, relay, and consume news, this is an important story. What makes news reliable around the world is that world governments allow journalists the freedom to interview such groups. Doing so provides an ever-important comparative perspective on how we see the world. Next up, source. AP News International. U.S. outlines plan for Venezuela transition. Sanctions relief. In this plan, said to be released today, economic sanctions will be lifted off of the country and a transitional council government will be created to lead the country until new presidential elections can be held. The council is to be made up of five people. Two chosen by the opposition of the government, two chosen by the government, and the fifth chosen by the council themselves. Neither of the two individuals claiming to be president at the moment will be on the council. The implications. Even though conditions in Venezuela are worsening, so long as Maduro retains the loyalty of the military, this offer is not likely to be taken. The U.S. has a long history of meddling in Latin American politics. This will likely be seen as simply a continuation of that history, and likely rejected. Our following story, source, BBC World, section, Africa. Sierra Leone overturns ban on pregnant schoolgirls. This ban lasted for five years, and was a reaction to the Ebola crisis at the same time. The country's leading court finally declared that this law discriminated against the human rights of women. The implications. The article cites UN organization UNICEF research of 2015, which states at the time it was found that about 40% of women were married before the age of 18. Last week, we reported on women's strikes in Mexico due to increased rates of femicide. There is so much work to be done across the globe for gender equality. Thank you, Sierra Leone, for getting rid of a law that hindered progress in that effort, a law which you created. And now our headline in the spotlight segment, source, 538 politics. How will Biden choose his running mate? With so much going on in the world today, it's easy to forget that the Democratic Party in the U.S. is trying to choose the presidential nominee for the election of the president of the country to take place this November. Although the primary process is not over, Biden already has a sizable lead and the momentum to possibly carry him to the nomination. The background and implications of this story. The Democratic Party is attempting to put together an electoral ticket that can unify the party, as well as independent voters and swing voters, in an effort to attract a large enough constituency to beat the president. And choosing the vice presidential candidate is key to that effort. Questions to consider for lo-fi poli students. How will gender play into this selection? How will race and ethnicity play into it? And is age an important factor for a potential choice? Write in and let us know your thoughts. And now, our last piece of news from the LA Times. And a warning to listeners of Lo-Fi poli normally we stay away from the COVID-19 stories because there's simply too much going on in the world that matters that is not related. That being said, I could not pass this up. Here's to you, California. The story. California pot dispensaries are open during coronavirus crisis. Some want them closed. As of now, the governor's office of the state is claiming that the health benefits of keeping pot shops open outweighs the risk. This puts a new spin on what we consider essential services to remain open in times of emergencies. The implications. Oh, California, thank you for being you and letting us all know that there's still someone out there with the gas, up in smoke, taking it easy, having a good time. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Let me say thank you so much for listening. Stay safe, wash those hands, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Lo-Fi Poli-Sci Podcast. Pickering, signing off.